Today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at some subscriber gameplay submitted by you guys, the subscribers, over on Twitter, link in the description, if you're interested in having your own gameplay broken down. And this was one that we chose. We actually did it on stream over on Twitch, which is also at the top of the description. We went through all of the various videos that have been submitted, and we broke them down live with viewer feedback. And this is the one that they thought that people should get the most benefit out of if I decided to make a video out of it. So that's what we've done today. If you do enjoy this type of content, please do me a favor hitting the like button. Go on today's video, it's 2,000 likes. Hopefully you guys can crush it as you guys have been doing if you're brand new looking to find your way back for more call of duty content definitely make sure you are subscribed with notifications on if you'd like to join that community that i'm talking about you can also join the discord which is again linked down in the description so what we've seen here the lands a little bit of a safe area doing a recon which i don't normally recommend in solos just because you make yourself very vulnerable and unless you're going to do a bunch of them they don't really benefit you all that much so for example in this case it might have been better suited going for a bounty if you land quick you think the bounty is going to be close by or go for a scavenger where you could just rack up on money rather quickly so you kind of get the balance of getting money as fast as you can because the goal of getting the money is to get a loadout so you can get your guns your loadouts as fast as possible so he's kind of stocked up got a couple lmgs when these go off people hear them in the area and there's an on-screen prompt so that makes it a little bit tricky for you um one thing i did talk about on stream as well is bringing in that hud or that safe area um, i'm guessing they're playing on a monitor if they're playing on pc with key keyboard and mouse um, so ideally you want to bring that just a little bit closer um, so your eyes don't have to work nearly as much um, which is it saves you on time uh, and energy as you're peeking across so here the guy coming in this is kind of an odd shot but PC if you feel comfortable enough with your aim you're gonna be able to make it um, normally when somebody's falling out of the sky you're gonna have to lead those shots um, just because of the bullet distance at that range so he's already up to 3500 the contract didn't give him that much he doesn't even pay attention to the big map so he's not really getting that much intel um and it, if there was another one up top he could have grabbed here uh you can see on the map but it doesn't look like he went that route um so he's not going and doing them back to back should be a good weapon in here a lot of times these gold ones give you some money i would have gone with that mp5 um he's using an airstrike right away well, that was kind of odd um, even if you saw someone there, I wouldn't necessarily call that in right away. Kind of an odd choice. So, full loadout. You can see the zone already shifted. So, you can see, head kind of on a swivel, paying attention, which is normally what you, you expect to see, want to see from gameplay. A lot of times, if you just see people running in a straight, straight line, they're kind of just a little bit... Moving around very sluggishly, they're not going to get a lot out of uh, the match because they're going to run into obstacles that maybe they're not aware of because somebody's looking at them from a different angle and they're just not paying attention. So obviously he could have been running around with his SMG this whole time, but opted not to. He was running around with the clunky LMG, so kind of a bad move there. But sometimes it's just a matter of habit. The guy, he pops the dead silence. He's expecting the guy to be up here. This is pretty much the only place it can go. The guy can't hear him walk up. Um, unfortunately, if that guy had the UAV, he's going to know he's coming up. But even if you didn't pop dead silence, the person cannot hear you when you come up the stairs. So that guy's a little mad. Luckily, he comes up on a UAV. Has the LMG. Now he has 14,000. Got to jump down. Try and get to the buy station. Oh, there's a guy out here. Good spotting there. Is this guy going to get away? Close the distance. Smart move. That guy's probably plating. Comes up. Had a broken line of sight, so he took advantage of that. Worked out really well there. He has a UAV, and then there's a precision airstrike that he should go get back on that tree when he gets a chance. Um, you can see that there's plenty of people in the area. He does mark the player. That's a smart way to do it. Anytime any red dots are popping up on your screen, you want to get in the habit of, if you feel like you're safe, marking people as quickly as you can. Probably not the best shot to take there unless you maybe using a sniper or a growl or a low, uh, low recoil weapon. Uh, but obviously with that, he's using an LMG, which can be a little bit trickier at range um, because the bullet velocity just tends to drop off. The only thing you got is the prey and spray where you just have a ton of ammo. See how he's moving back and forth. He gets the, the Bruin, uh, which is a great a great LMG. It's, it's very underrated, I think, just because it's hard to unlock. You got to spend a lot of garbage time in multiplayer throwing smokes and shooting through those smokes with LMGs, which can be kind of annoying. 
um, if you if you don't want to go out of your way to spend the money for a blueprint that only unlocks portion of the attachments. So good class setup there. You can see he ran it with ghosts so he can have that secondary there. Um, and then he just swapped out the sticks for the for the weapon. So now he has a bison with this, but this is gonna be his primary go-to. So once that, once you get your ghost, it really ends up being beneficial because now you can move around the map a little bit differently. Um, because anytime a UAV is called in, you don't have to expect someone knows where you're at. He's running suppressor, so pretty much, so you're not going to be on the map unless someone physically sees you. So he's going back up here. This is actually a pretty good line of sight to different areas, especially if people are using thermals. They won't be able to see you, which thermals are still pretty popular. Um, I don't know why, because there's so many situations they're bad. Um, and if you've used them long enough, you can kind of get an idea of where they're bad. He's going to start shooting a little early here. He gets the guy to go to cover. Personally, I would have practiced a little bit more patience in this situation. This guy, as he comes over here, he is going to be a little bit more in the open, and then there's no cover that this guy is going to have. Even though maybe he can get behind this vehicle, you're going to be closer. So in reality, you're probably going to be more accurate. You're going to land more shots because it's less spread, less bullet drop. And then you're going to be able to pretty much down the guy before he has a chance to react and get to cover. So in this particular case, I would have waited till he was probably like more in this spot where this, uh, where this little handle is blocking or maybe even gotten a little bit closer and take the angle because odds are he's running directly to the buy station you just got to catch him before he gets to the buy station because odds are this guy is going to drop cash if he's heading to a buy station so he damages the guy i'd probably take a quick second to reload uh while you're looking he's gonna end up calling the precision not reloaded just kind of watch how that stacks together this guy basically he, he's almost dead calls in the precision the guy runs out not reloaded only three bullets and you end up in a situation where now you got to kind of chase this guy down. And you ended up wasting uh, the, the strike. So let's say you shot the guy and he has a self-revive. He would have gone down and then maybe use the strike. The strike shouldn't be used as a down. Um, it should either be used in rotation or to finish off a down. And rotation could be clearing a roof because you need a move uh, or clearing a specific area because you need to rotate in. There's a lot of different rotational ways that you're going to move around the map. It just depends on how you want to do it. So he's coming in here, going to get his second ghost class. So now he has his origin, which is a pretty nasty shotgun here. And what came up in the stream is what people were saying, well, why would you go with an origin over an MP5 or MP7? And pretty much what will happen is when you come head to head, within about five meters, the shotgun is going to win. Outside of five meters, odds are the MP5 is going to win because the way the damage works, the bullet spread, the, the pellet spread, all that type of stuff with the shotgun, you end up doing significantly less damage. And the further you get away, it's like destroys your time to kill to where you almost got to land like 10, 10 shots where you're getting hit markers before the person's going to get down, which is just way too much. You would have downed them with an MP5. So as long as you can get that close quarters, they're not expecting it. You will insta melt people. You're going to see when he comes to this building, the guy gave away his position. He could have probably pushed this a little bit sooner. He saw where the, the red smoke was. See, that was outside of the range. MP5, he probably downs the guy as the guy comes up, but still effective. Still effective range. That's kind of like the, the medium there where he was just out of range where you want to use that shotgun. Heartbeat sensor. That's very common. You want to use that. Um, the only thing you got to be aware of is you, you can't get in a position where you're always trusting the heartbeat sensor. Uh, you still got to be aware of your surroundings. So, like... You, you got to just take it for if it marks someone cool, if it doesn't still expect people to be there because it's not going to show ghost players. And at this point in the match, most people have gotten that second loadout or a loadout at least or at least one loadout with ghost. So and this is a risky spot to do these recons. Um, I don't really like the, the recons for this reason because you can't cover each other. You can see he was able to acquire the target, take him out. Bruin, like I said, is a very good gun. I think uh, it, it is off meta, 
uh, because most people are using the Growl MP5 right now or they're using a Sniper M4 or some combination of that. I think this one kind of fits in the balance of both. I think once the Growl gets nerfed, this will be more meta um, just because of how it fits into the meta. It does a lot of damage, very low recoil, doesn't have quite the bullet velocity that we're seeing out of the Growl, but not many weapons do um, as we'll see once that nerf ends up taking effect. And I really would love for the devs to consider giving that 60 round mag the way they've done with this to the MG and to the PKM because I think with those weapons having a 60 round mag essentially converting them to rifle mobility, not quite as low as rifle mobility, but rifle mobility, then you'd have a little bit more of a shakeup of the meta where it feels like you actually have an opportunity to not use one weapon every single match. You hear the gunfire in front. They almost got an ammo box. You got to self revive, and he has enough money for a UAB, but didn't buy one. He's going up for this recon again. Let's see if he stacks the third, or if he just walks right by it and gets the high ground. All right, cool. He grabbed it, and he's gonna go back. See if this actually gets it. It's funny. Like I said, with these, they could put you in some pretty bad spots if you're not ready for it, especially once you step on it. Everyone in the area gets a visual notification and an audio one and another visual one because they're going to know exactly where you're at. At least he's already kind of cleared a little bit of this area, so it shouldn't be really hot. But a lot of times, just bad timing, people could be swooping up on you. Oh, there it is. So he's expecting the guy on the front side. I probably wouldn't have my shotgun out um, until I was going to go up the stairs. You could hear the guy up top here. He's capturing it. The guy probably heard him. And he insta-destroyed that dude. See, that dude's mad. And that's what the Origin 12 can do. But only at that point-blank range, you can just spam it. Um, it. It beats out the R9 only because the R9 is good. If you only kill him in that two-burst um, that, that, that it has. If it requires an extra shot, tanks the time to kill. So right here, they know he's in here. They're going to push. They push to the top. You can hear him up top. And right here, lost track of him, got the kill trade. Luckily, he has self-revived. The other guy doesn't. That guy's mad. He's like, I knocked him. But it doesn't matter because he had a self-revive. You left your money, and then now he gets the opportunity. That guy goes to the gulag, and then he ends up with enough money, clears his contract, and then start positioning. He's done three of them, which is definitely more than enough. If you just wanted to win the game, you could do three, like I said, if you're only focused on winning, you don't care about the rotation aspect, you don't care about getting kills along the way, learning to navigate the map. You just want to get a win, do some recons, and then you can position yourself towards the last circle um, in, in a power position um, and thinking ahead about rotations because unless you do like six of them, you're not going to know where the final zone is. You can see he's kind of rotating with it and doing these together, which, like I said, there's a trade-off of... There's a risk reward. Somebody just activated one. He's not looking around. There it is. You can see it on the screen. Perfect timing that it was in his general direction, or else he would have had to kind of look around to see where he can take that dude out. Personally, I would like to see those nerfed by them appearing on the map. So you can actually mark them when somebody is doing them. You can literally run directly and mark it at the map so you know where to head instead of just a visual cue. Or the other part of them, because they're kind of easy to do, is slow down the time. So they require you to stand in them longer. Um, and then this would be compounded by doing trios or quads or duos where more people are standing on them. Or the other thing is to make it kind of like a scavenger, where the scavengers, you have to do three of them. With these, you'd have to do two. So you do one, it would say one of two complete, and then you'd go to the next one, and then you'd have to do two of two. So that's just kind of how that would work. So... This one, he could go for a bounty, too. Like, there's a bounty right in this room. He has cash. He still needs to get a self-revive. This guy has another stack, 4,500. Double checks the building and then creeps in here. Pretty solid. Grabs this. Works out. He has a good loadout. Um, he just can't get downed now because he doesn't have that. He needs the, to get back in the, in the right situation. It looks like the guy could be coming out of the ladder on this left side. Because there's a, the ladder that goes in here. Oh, the guy jumped down. It looks like he's rotating towards him. He could be in this little cubby. Maybe swatch to your origin if the guy's down low. Nope, he's further away. The guy has ghost, it looks like. 
Oh, you heard him. He's on your left. It's hard to tell exactly where the guy is at. Sounds like he's up top, though. Kind of risky here. The guy definitely heard you. 13,000 is for this bounty. Oh, there's a guy. Definitely hard to spot, though. You can see the guy who's behind the crate. So, he's coming out of the gulag. And normally with the gulag at this time, the, the loadout drop doesn't come out till the middle of the fifth zone. Um, so, it's not close. He's got a couple minutes before that happens. So, his best bets are to kind of land on a scav. Maybe get a little bit extra cash so he can get a UAV. Maybe loot, get some weapons, because scavs also have weapons typically in them. Maybe a gas mask, armor plates. There's a lot of things there. Um, or if you just want to risk it, you could always ba land back up on your loot. Um, and that is a risky thing to do because depending on how passive the enemy is that you killed, they'll just be waiting for you. Um, and I know there's people who actively wait a loot camp where they're watching your loot so they see if anyone comes in there. So he's going for it. Going right back to where he was. The guys it would say enemy incoming. So the, the guy should be watching the loot. Definitely a risk. The door's closed. He's able to get all of his guns. He still has his streak there. Wait, is that a streak? Trophy system. There it is. Cluster. And he has the ammo for an SMG, which he's not carrying. So no biggie. He just called in the cluster. Kind of an odd choice. Unless he must have heard the dude. He must have heard the dude. I didn't hear the dude. But he must have heard him on the other side of the wall. To call in the cluster. So good move. If the, he thought the guy was in there, at least that allowed him. Maybe he's on the other side of the wall. The cluster provides some cover. Um, where the guy, if he was on top, then he met, forces him off the building. Um, but then he heard, he must have heard him on the other side there. So it worked out really well. Gets his self-revive. Contemplates picking that up. And then it's like, nope, needs more money. He only has 2,700. Unfortunately, he missed out on that huge bounty, which would have uh, stacked him on cash. Yeah, there's another bounty he could have grabbed if he wanted to just go after money. Um, he's fully looted again. So he has everything except for his perks. Uh, and that's particularly important uh, for weapon swapping if you have amp. Um, ghost for anyone that calls in a UAV or they're using a heartbeat sensor. Um, and then EOD if you run EOD. So there's, there's different things that are going on there. And you can see how he's pretty vigilant about checking different areas. Um, a lot of times people overthink it and think PC players are like crazy or something like that. Just because they have the whole arm range of motion. And it just comes down to sensitivity. There's people who play on console with a controller with 2020 max sensitivity. Um, and they just stack it. And they're, they're perfectly fine being able to turn around like that. There are advantages in high sense players. Same thing with keyboard and mouse. There are advantages of having a high DPI or high sensitivity in game. Um, but usually they're at the cost of accuracy unless you just have the muscle memory in from hours and hours of playing the game, which not everyone has an opportunity to do. So typically the most accurate, if you want to just be the most accurate, you're typically going to have a little bit lower aim down or a little, little bit lower sensitivity but not so low that you're not able to peek corners and check the area. I think typically the lowest most people should go is a 3-3. I know there's some people that play a 2-2. Um, I couldn't imagine playing on a 1-1, but I'm sure there's people who do. Um, personally, I play on a 5-5, which is rather slow. Um, but I feel like my accuracy is, is the most important thing when I'm trying to get into a gunfight. So there's a risk. There was a red dot over there by that vehicle much earlier on. So there is likely somebody coming from that edge of the gas. You got to pay attention to the loadout. You can see there's three on this side, two, one, and then one. So it looks like a bulk is going to be on this left side towards this one over here. And then there's a guy on this far left side. Maybe he already started rotating across. There's 11 players. So there's going to be a to or 12 players. So there's going to be a total of 12 loadout drops. Um, and you just got to rotate based off where your position is going to be. You hear the gunfire again back here. So there was two guys still left behind. And somebody is shooting at him from behind. He got his perks again. That's basically what he went for. So now he has his ghost cold-blooded and then he has amped. He did see somebody shooting at him. 
got to spot exactly where this guy is. So, what do I have? That guy just died. <laughs> Somebody looked like they called something in. Oh, no, that was just the leaf falling. So, what a lot of times people don't realize is the last zone where the loadout drops for the fifth zone. What will happen is they're going to put the loadouts in the circle because they want to have you have the opportunity to come back and get your loadout. So, they're always going to almost put it like 99% of the time, they're going to put it within that zone. So that when the zone collapses, your your thing will still be there. So a lot of times it's gonna guy gonna be around that edge, and that's what we saw here. This guy was over here. That was probably his loadout from getting a gunfight over here. He kind of rotated across, probably got in a gunfight. Or there's still a guy on this side that you can't hear, and he died, and that's why the loadout vanished. He's kind of in a bad spot too, because if he gets shot, he doesn't have a ton of cover. But there are some rocks he can kind of get behind. Kind of have a lower profile. You hear the gunfire? I would mark it on the map, though. You can see where the guys are at. Those two buildings over here on the map uh, right above the clock here. You can see exactly where the, the red dot was. So at least one person's there. We're down to six people uh, left that he's got to go against. There's someone in the vehicle. And then there's two people fighting on this edge. So there's one, two, three, four out of the six. So there's just two more remaining. Another person on a vehicle that could be the other guy that was in the building hard to say and now you can come up and third party This guy on the right because you know that there was people on this outside edge So if you follow the edge of the gas here, you're gonna have 34 seconds before it closes to kind of do a little bit of a perimeter check You could hear for anything see if anything's going on There's a loadout over here. That guy wasn't able to come grab it. Looks like he probably went a little bit further around Looks like he's gonna go sweep around the right side then only four players left. So two more died and then he's heading back the other way. So he's just kind of lapping back and forth, which is okay. Um, but he's not getting any engagements because he's not seeing anybody because he didn't go far enough to the right and not far enough to the left. So odds are if this person came in from this side on the, uh, the left, they're probably going to go to that buy station. So I'd be wary of this house with the buy station because that was a very safe area up until the zone closing. So there's a guy on this other side kind of avoiding that guy completely. There's only three players left. So it looks like one of the two players is left over there. He spotted him, didn't give away his position. This guy could be running from a gunfight, but odds are he just killed the, the other guy that was over here. There's the guy with the right. Oh, no, he's actually running away from him. Riot shield, easy kill. Two players left. And here's where it gets a little bit tricky. He saw the other guy run down. So he knows that the guy's on the left. And normally what will happen is it's, it's almost proven. I actually seen this one time when I was watching Spiros back in Blackout. He was kind of like, he, he called it something like the triangle method or something like that. But basically the point is when there's only about three or four players left, Normally, they're in a triangle formation because they would have already ran into each other by that point. Most often. Obviously, it's a battle royale, so there's a little bit of randomness. But it's almost a perfect triangle. You can see that he's right here. The person that he just ran down is over here. And then this person's over here. So they're always going to make a triangle. Obviously, no matter what, you connect the three dots, they're going to be a triangle. But that's not the point. What I mean is where they're directionally at. Because obviously, they could both be over here. They could be further over here. But ideally... The way it's going to work, if there's a guy on the left side of the zone, there's going to be the other guy on the right side of the zone. If they haven't ran into each other, they haven't killed each other, it's a good guess to assume that they're on separate parts. Um, and, and then generally, it does work. Like a high percentage, uh, just kind of how the behavior of the players work. Because odds are, if this guy was by himself, no one could kill him. The final two players were on this side. One of them had to kill each other. And you ended up killing the last one there. So now that leaves you with the three of them in that triangle formation. So just something to keep in mind. So he's kind of in a bad spot here because he can't really get a good line of sight there. Um, he has to plate up. He still knows that this guy's on the left, which he could be creeping up on him. I know if I heard gunfire, I'd probably be creeping up this way to try and sneak up on this guy. Just coast to the edge. Good thing he's covering the edge here. And he does something really smart here that I've talked about in videos, and you'll see exactly what I mean. So 37 meters. He doesn't see the guy. He's like, is that guy really there? Yep. Guy's still not moving. 
He marks the area, 51 meters, so he knows the guy. Perfect, right? That's why you do those things, because it gives you a visual, visual representation of what you're seeing on the heartbeat sensor uh, or in-game, because you have the distance in meters. Now, the appropriate thing to do here is you know where the last guy is. So pretty much all you do is got to push this, and you can gatekeep them, because they have to rotate towards you, uh, because the house is right here. The house is in the gas. So as the gas closes, guaranteed they have to move from that location. And if you're already in position, you get there quick enough, you will win that gunfight. So the guy is right there, 40 meters. He should be still creeping up. He should be coming out of that house. There he is. Boom. He could have probably been beamed too. That guy would have had to jump out of the house. And no matter what, that was a gunfight this, this player was going to win. So overall, pretty solid match. Hopefully, guys, did enjoy the gameplay. If you did, please do me a favor. Hit that like button. If you're brand new, looking to find your way back for more Call of Duty content, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. If you'd like your gameplay broken down to join the community or check out a live stream, those are all linked at the top of the description. Appreciate all the support on the channel. You guys have been showing a lot of support. Thank you for watching. As always, have a great day.